Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to another episode of 31 Days of Halloween. But first, a word from our sponsor. Strange things happen in the Gulp. The residents have grown used to it. The isolated Australian harbor town of Gulpepper is not like other places. Some maps don't even show it, and only outsiders use the full name. Everyone who lives there calls it the Gulp. The place has a habit of swallowing people. A truck driver thinks the stories about the Gulp are made up to scare him until he gets there. Teenage siblings try to cover up the death of their mother, but their plans go drastically awry. A rock band invites four backpackers to a party at their house where things get dangerously out of hand. A young man loses a drug shipment and his boss gives him 48 hours to make good on his mistake. Under the blinking eye of the old lighthouse, a rock fisher makes the strangest catch of his life. Five novellas, five descents into darkness. Welcome to the gulp where nothing is as it seems. Sarah Pinborough, author of Netflix's smash hit Behind Her Eyes, says, If you're a fan of one-town horror anthologies with a best-of-80s vibe, like anything from Castle Rock or Josh Malerman's Goblin, then you really should get yourself some Tales from the Gulp by Alan Baxter. Grim Deathwish at Horror Fuel says, The Gulp is a clinic on how to tell a tale of horror. Alan Baxter has endorsements from some of the biggest names in the business. This is Horror says, Alan Baxter is Australia's master of literary darkness. Comics legend Gail Simone says, Alan Baxter can take horror from gonzo to heartbreaking in an instant. Good stuff. Alan Baxter can write like a motherfucker. Legendary horror master Laird Barron says, Alan Baxter is an accomplished storyteller who ably evokes magic and menace. And Paul Tremblay says, Baxter delivers the horror goods. Many thanks to Alan Baxter for sponsoring this video. Now on with a book haul. Okay, so I know I just did a book haul last week on Sunday, but I found we went uh, to celebrate some big news and the release of uh, my new book, Maiden, that I wrote with uh, T.C. Parker. And I used a pen name for this one. It's Award Nerdlow. Uh, N-E-R-D-L-O. I'll leave a link to it down there in the doobly-doo if you want to check it out. But we went out thrifting to celebrate, and I picked up several awesome-sounding books and books that I haven't... Well, that I've been looking for for a while, but I just hadn't come across. Also, I have two books that were sent to me for review for Turner Publishing that I'm super hyped about. But let's just go ahead and jump into it. The first one I have today is Child of God by Cormac McCarthy. I'm a massive fan of Cormac McCarthy. I have absolutely no issue with the fact that he doesn't use quotation marks. I know some of you do, and that's fine, but you're missing out on some fantastic stories. Uh, this one is about uh, falsely, oh wait, sec, hang on, falsely accused of rape, Lester Ballard, a violent, dispossessed man who haunts the hill country of East Tennessee, is released from jail and allowed to roam at will, preying on the population with his strange lusts. Uh, this one has been, uh, I I've been told that it's more of a horror novel, more along the lines of like Blood Meridian, um, more so than, you know, uh, No Country for Old Men and The Road, which is more post-apocalyptic fiction. I guess it had some horror. But uh, this is one of the few of his that I have not read. I'm looking forward to getting into it. Next up is a book from an author that I have been wanting to read forever. I just never got around to. And that's Walter Mosley. The book is 47. And I picked this one up specifically because of the description. And, you know, I normally don't read descriptions, but the reason why I read this one is because I didn't want to read any of his detective fiction. I wanted to read something else he'd done. And this one is uh, the story you are about to read concerns certain events that occurred in the early days of my life. It all happened over 170 years ago. I'm not sure if it's a vampire thing or what, I don't know, but for many of you, it might sound like a tall tale because I'm no older today than I was back in the year 1832. But this is no whopper, I'm telling you. This is a story about my boyhood as a slave and my fated encounter with the amazing Tall John from beyond Africa, who could read dreams fly between galaxies, and make friends with any animal no matter how wild. This sounds amazing. 
Um, I know he has a very sparse uh, noir type style and I, I love stuff like that. Uh, again, I'm not super big into crime fiction, so if you guys want to uh, recommend me any other Mosleys that I might like that aren't, you know, his detective stuff or, you know, it can just be dark and gritty, um, but I try to stay away from anything involving detectives, PIs, any of that stuff. Um, but also, if you'd like to try to talk me into reading, you know, what, what was it, Deep Blue Sea or Devil in a Blue Dress? something like that. Um, if you want to try and talk me into his detective fiction or PI fiction, whatever it is, you can do that down there in the doobly-doo. <clears throat> Next up is a book that I have read three times so far, but I only listened to it. I'm a huge fan of Neil Gaiman, um, and this is one of his most beautiful pieces, The Ocean at the End of the Lane. Um, I, I don't have, I've never had a physical copy of this one. Uh, when it first came out, the, uh, I, I remember, I remember being kind of upset because it was being marketed as a novel. It is definitely a novella. This one has huge type and it's only like a hundred and some odd pages. Hang on, let me see here. Uh, I know the audiobook's only like three hours long. Yeah, it's 181, uh, pages and the type is super big. Um, and they were charging $27 for this when it first came out. And I don't care how much I like, the only person that I'm willing to do that with is Stephen King, and usually I can still get it cheaper on Amazon. This one I couldn't. So I was real happy to pick this one up. Next one is from an author that I reviewed just recently, uh, Tanana Reeve Du. I found The Good House, which has a really, really ominous, fantastic cover. Um, I'm going to be reading her books in order of publication, so it's going to be a while before I get to this one. I think this is one of her newer books. Um, I could be wrong about that. I'm not going to waste your time looking at the, the date that it was published. But uh, this, is the, this is the one that everybody seems to really, really love. Um, they talk about it quite a bit, especially on Book Twitter, Bookstagram, all that stuff. Booktube is even really popular. Um, I'm excited to get into this one, mainly because I, I, I'm hoping it's another family story. I refuse to read the description of this one because I want to go in blind, just like I did with The Between. Now, next up, I believe this one should already be up on the channel, the review for this one. I read it ages ago, but it's a perfect read for this time of year. So I went ahead and got the uh, the paperback because I found it. I've been looking for it forever. This is another one of those books that is usually really, really overpriced. And that's, uh, well, it's called Let the Right One In by John uh, Edvid Lindquist. I think uh, I'm pronouncing that right. But uh, the, this is the movie tie-in cover for the American version of the movie, which is just as good, in my opinion, as the original, uh, the original film. Um, I think it's Swedish. I could be wrong, but I think it's Swedish. And uh, Matt Reeves directed this one. It's just a really good movie. Um, but yeah, I've been looking for a copy of this one forever, and I finally found one. It was only $3.99 at Goodwill. I was shocked. Now, on to the books that I got for review. Uh, Turner Publishing, uh, who published uh, Matthew Lyon's last book. I can't remember the title of it right now, I'm sorry, but um, it's a, I absolutely loved it. It was one of my favorite books of last year. It's a very, not obscure title, but it's one of those ones that's really easy to, to forget for some reason for me. Um, but Matthew Lyons, I absolutely loved his debut, um, but we're, we're, we're going to talk about that in a second. First off, they sent me Spontaneous Human Combustion by Richard Thomas. Um, I know of Richard Thomas. Uh, I follow him on Twitter. He follows me. Uh, we've never had any interactions, but um, I've always wanted to read his book and I figure his work. And I figure this is a good place to start. This is a short story collection, and the cover is absolutely amazing. Look at that. It's a werewolf and a person coming apart. Anyways, uh, it's got a uh, blurb from Chuck Palahniuk that says, In range alone, Th Richard Thomas is boundless. He is Lovecraft, he is Bradbury, he is Gaiman. That's some high, high praise. This is, I'm just going to give you a brief uh, bit. It said, In this new collection, Richard Thomas has crafted 15 stories that push the boundaries of dark fiction in an intoxicating, piercing blend of fantasy, science fiction, and horror. Um, I'm going to read one or two of the story descriptions. A uh, poker game yields a strange prize that haunts one man. His game of chance now turned into a life or death coin flip. That sounds awesome. Another one that piqued my interest was a father and son work slave labor in a brand new world run by aliens and mount a rebellion that may end up freeing them all. 
these are descriptions of what sound like novels to me. Um, I'd be inter I'm very interested to see how he pulls off big stories in such a small space. And lastly, we have Matthew Lyon's new one, A Black and Endless Sky. I'm trying to get the glare out of the way. Look at that, man. That is amazing. I love it. I love the cover. Um, but yeah, his, his first book, let me go ahead and look up so, since I... Couldn't remember what it was. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, it doesn't have his... Huh. It doesn't have the uh, his last book. There's no uh, list at the beginning. You know how there normally is about what they published before. Oh, man. I wish I remembered that one. I know I have it sitting around here anyways. But I'm not going to hold you guys up too long because it's really hot out in the office. Very... Uh, well, it's not uncharacteristic, but uh, it is... Um, it, it is hotter than it normally is around this time of year, even though it is warm around here in October. But anyways, uh, if you want to share any of your book hauls with me, you can type them down there in the doobly-doo. Uh, please note that if you try to link me to videos uh, of yours, it's uh, YouTube is going to block it. So if you want to hit me up on Twitter and share your videos, I'd love to see them. Um, or if you just want to list your stuff down there in the doobly doo, I would, I would love, I love to see book hauls. I love to read book hauls because it tells me so much about people. Um, and it, it's, it's a great way to break the ice and start a discussion. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you, this has been another book haul and another episode of 31 Days of Halloween. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye!